Hello, Brad here. Just to say we're super proud that the Friday 5pm podcast is sponsored by the Malt Miller, the UK's best home brew store. We use the Malt Miller for all of our homebrew experiments, as well as tapping them up for advice and binging on their awesome YouTube channel all the time. That's why whenever we release a homebrew video, we put a recipe kit live on the Malt Miller, so you can brew with the exact same amazing ingredients that we did. The same ingredients used by pro brewers. So alongside the Malt Miller's nitro flushed hops, cold stored yeast and milled to order malts, you can pick up recipe kits for our Five Points Best Bitter, Russian River West Coast IPA and now the fastest beer in the world, a hazy session IPA that goes from grain to glass in less than 48 hours. Sign up to their newsletter at tinyurl.com forward slash Malt Miller to get 5% off your first order. With the Malt Miller's amazing customer service and Johnny's 48 hour recipe, You could order the ingredients on a Monday and be drinking the beer by the weekend. Speaking of which, it's Friday. It's 5pm. So enjoy this week's Friday 5pm podcast. It's Friday, it's 5pm and we picked a terrible time to take a break because I think think Brad might have the best story in this podcast podcast history surely surely oh. the solstice is going to be an epic tale to to rival matt goss in the boot which is my favorite episode we've ever done now you've just you've just set me up for a fail there oh well yeah uh, but yeah i went i uh we, we we had a little bit of a down time didn't we? we have one week where we didn't record and in that week uh i went to summer solstice at stonehenge for the first time ever um, tell, tell people because we have global listeners what what is summer solstice before you so dive yeah, into what i'm sure is going to be a, a the, winding the solstice tale. Is, is, is the longest day of the year uh so it's the 21st of june i think that's i don't know if it's it, would that just be yeah i guess it would be the northern hemisphere right rather than the southern hemisphere so presumably they've got a switched solstice Never thought about that before. <laughs> it must be the opposite on the other side of the world. Yeah, it's not just so the like toilets that go the other way around. Yeah. New Zealand must have their summer. Well, they have their summer in the winter, don't they? So That's one solstice, way of looking at it, yep. Their longest. Is their longest day the 21st of December then? That's crazy if that is the case. Anyway, summer solstice, northern hemisphere, uh, 21st of June, longest day of the year. And I went to uh, an ancient monument. Uh, a world heritage site, um, uh, a destination for all kinds of crusties, hippies, dropouts, um, new wave, uh, new new uh, not new wave, not new rave, new age travelers, um, uh, people that enjoy uh, bongo drums, didgeridoos, <laughs> psychedelic drugs. Um, what else they enjoy? Camper vans, uh, horse boxes turned into camper vans, uh, Harry Krishnas um, with with portable giant uh, tower sort of things that they 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 moved around the site throughout the night, which was crazy. Um, it was basically a it was a collection of all kind of like minded, free thinking souls. Oh, and druids, Johnny, because at the end of the day. It is an ancient uh, religious site uh, for Stone Age uh, sort of characters, uh, Neolithic types, um, and and Druids that still practice the old ways, Johnny. And they. But I, th- I thought we didn't even really know what Stonehenge was for. How can they practice? Well, it's a it's an a, it's it's a astrological alignment of uh, when the sun comes up through the stones on the longest day. It it perfectly uh, goes through uh, an, an alignment <coughs> of the stones, <laughs> and uh, if you sort of stand in the middle of it and uh, blow your didgeridoo hard enough, then goodness, you can have a beautiful, wonderful experience. I am taking the mick, Johnny. If you hadn't noticed, but do you know uh, I'm never, I'm know never sure I'm with you mick. when it comes to this stuff. Where, where I don't know why I'm taking the mick because I met so many lovely people. And and like I've said didgeridoo a couple of times now. I got out of my little kangoo van as soon as I got there. Um, and one of the first people, actually the first guy that, that walked by, uh, had a giant didgeridoo 
and said hello to me, gave me the biggest smile. And I said, all right, mate. I had a cowboy hat on at the time. So I looked quite interesting, I suppose. Um, and I just thought, wow, that's a great start because, you know, it's only if up I was from ticking here. things off a list, really? then I, <laughs> I'd be like, okay, I've seen a didgeridoo first man and he's super friendly and he's, you know, he's it's, it's set things in a good light straight off the bat. Talking of which, Johnny, there was a lot of um, a lot of sort of tension trying to get into the site. So I I got to Salisbury earlier in the day. Um, lovely place actually. Never been to Salisbury before. The the, the town. Um, so we had some nice food, bit of a wander around, looked in some charity shops, um, did all did all that kind of stuff. Picked up some beers. Um, and then tried to make our way to Stonehenge. Uh, they told us not to turn up till seven. Was that a reference I, I, to to? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Stonehenge. Yeah, Stonehenge. Yeah, 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 yeah. Stonehenge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and um, yeah, we got there. I mean, we must have got there about half six, and they there was no one queuing. I was like, this is bizarre. Anyway, we got to the site. And they instantly turned us around and said, you need to go away, come back at seven. So then as soon as we started driving off, we just saw everyone was parked on the verges of all of the roads all the way around it in every direction. So we, we uh-huh. popped up on the side as well, did a bit of off-roading in the Kangoo um, and, and pulled up. <laughs> how, how'd that pan um, out? Because that, that one struggles on tarmac. Uh, no, it's pretty good actually. I've I've taken it uh, all over the place. But, I think it struggled. The, the last time I was because, in it, yeah, yeah, it conked Maybe out. Yeah, Maybe it's me. It conked out because I, I had I, I had a uh, a part that needed replacing, which I've now replaced. So now, at touch wood, it's very reliable, Johnny. And it but, is made um, of wood, so it is made of wood. Is it made of wood? The kangoo, <laughs> maybe. Um, it is. It is like a bit Stone Age uh, car, to be honest, but. Um, yeah, anyway, so we parked up and then someone parked up in front of us, Johnny, and they could have had a wee anywhere, right? Oh, wow. Where do you think they decided to have a wee? On your bonnet. Not on our bonnet. They had a wee on their own car. They pissed on the side of their car. What's well, that about? I, I, I don't know whether it's an urban myth, but if you piss on your own car, it's not public urination. Oh, but so I, he was I, being... I, I think he was trying to make it legal, but I think that's also nonsense. Right. Well, it was really weird because I thought this guy's some kinky weirdo. He's pissing on his own car. Um, <laughs> it was really odd. It was an odd thing to observe. And we just sat just directly behind him. Mm. Bumper uh, bumper to bonnet. You should have beat anyway. him. See if you could make him should stop midstream. Him. Or just splash himself all over that. Yeah. Good as well. <laughs> um, so anyway, we, eventually we got in, Johnny. We we're right at the beginning, right at the crest of the hill. We got in. Parked up, uh, I think the second row of people, didgeridoo man said hello. Then uh, I got back in the van and I was like, right, what beers have we got? Um, and I'd stocked up on a lot of um, lost and grounded Keller pills, uh, little, the little stubbies. Uh, are they stubbies? Yeah, I think I did I did buy stubbies in a four pack. A I have of four seen packs. them in 330s, yeah. Which was quite quite a good format, I must say, to drink them in. Um, so I drank, consumed some of those in the van, uh, and then we had maybe about a 20 minute walk to the site of the monument, uh, over which I, I decided, uh, I said to Kirsty, well, we should take three beers in our bags each and drink a beer on the way as well. Um, so we're drinking a beer on the way, drinking a beer on the way, and then we get right up to uh, the monument. And there are a line of dudes that are checking people's bags. I don't know why I thought it was going to be less uh, festively than it than it was. So um, I had all this color pills in my bag, uh, and I sat there on the floor uh, near the drug bin where you you could drug put your drugs. Wow. Yeah, if you if you had illegal drugs, you could put your drugs in the bin, um, which is really funny because we, we probably sat there for half an hour drinking beer and the amount of people that looked in the drugs bin to see if there were any drugs they could nick in the drugs bin Mm. was off the chain like there were so many people like it had a lock on it it was a wheelie bin with a little slot in the top 
but it like so many people were eyeing it up um which was hilarious uh but anyway we sort of sat on the floor and then other people joined us sit- sitting on the floor as well people who made we the same drank... mistake and you all just yeah. yeah we all drank our beers anyway johnny i drank i think i drank maybe like three keller pills man i hope that's uh... poor to lose at stone <laughs> back to back and then I had a Thatcher's Gold as well. Oh. And I think I drank my girlfriend's Thatcher's Gold. Uh, yeah, it was. We just thought, oh, we'll just. I think we were at a motorway service station. It was like the best thing we could get. There was, yeah, there just weren't any good lagers, basically. So Thatcher's Gold down that. And then I felt incredibly gassy, Johnny. Um, right. At which point I walked into the ancient monument and uh, instantly I took my sandals off. So I was walking around barefoot all evening. Um, went in the stone circle, uh, watched the sunset. Whoa, 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 um, whoa, whoa! Tell, t- tell me yeah. about because obviously I've never been. I've done the walk yeah. around where you're what, like thirty, forty meters away, maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There, there's there's like, like a what's an the outer scale ring, of it? isn't there? Yeah. What's the, the scale? Of okay, so okay, so the scale is uh, a fair bit smaller than you're hoping for, right? But they're also <laughs> very absolutely... spinal tap then. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's definitely a bit like, what? Hang on a minute. Uh, because you think it's going to be... And it is, don't don't get me wrong, it's huge. I'm, I'm going to say, also... I, I'd expect it to be maybe three times as tall as me. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Oh, three, so... At least three times as oh, tall okay. as me. Oh, okay. But, so you but thought like, it'd be bigger actual... than that? Yeah, I don't know. Oh. It's I thought it was going to be like football pitch size or something. Like huge. Not football pitch size, that's too huge, but bigger than it was i thought it'd be bigger than it was this right. this would be like an intimate venue um if you're at a gig like there were there were hundreds of people in the stone circle but we were all shoulder to shoulder uh bongo drum to bongo drum um so everybody's packed and, in within the stones they're not sort of oh all around as well like oh, okay. we, we went in for a bit the to be honest the i think it was yeah it was friday night was full of uh younger people that were uh pissed they were there for a good time not yeah yeah they were there for like a rave essentially they were they were real getting into uh the the bongo drums and they were they were kind of clambering all over the stones which i thought was a bit disrespectful um and uh yeah they were just (laughs) disrespectful to whom the people that built uh, it are long gone. <laughs> it's yeah, but it's like a church, man. It's the same as a church. So you don't go into a church and then climb up the fucking walls, uh, unless you're in Da Vinci Code. I should, I should or stop something. doing that. Um, so uh, and uh, like you could see older people visually upset by the shenanigans of. I, I have to call them. They were like twenty year old uh, chavs. A lot, of, lot of chavs. The first uh, bit. Um, and they they seem to have a good time. So we went to the outer sort of edges, I guess, of the circle where it was still earthworks and, and mounds and things going on. We sat there for a bit, and then I I went for a wee, Johnny, because obviously I needed a wee after yeah, about seven beers. Um, and as I, I as I sort of wandered over to the loos, the port loos, I thought I was seeing a mirage because I saw this like horse drawn uh sort of vaudevillian victorian looking stage uh in the middle of uh the field um and it was all lit up with like red lights and i kind of wandered over to it needing a piss but i I was just drawn in like a moth to the to the to the sort of red lights Uh, as i went over i saw um this man that was uh up on the stage that looked like a kind of uh, what can I describe him like a Victorian Fagan pirate character <laughs> in a giant sort of robe type thing around his like almost like a sort of pimp coat around his shoulders, and he had really amazing long dreadlocks. Um, and yeah, I, I, I he probably had like a gold tooth as well. He had like a real kind of looked sort of like his face looked like it was kind of a bit dirty. Uh, like he was like a proper pirate, like he'd been pirating, and he one of his arms it transpired was um I think it was actually his shoulder was broken, so he couldn't move one arm, 
but he kept gesturing these huge gestures with with his other arm and he had this like proper uh like piratey kind of crackly voice and he was he was the guy that ran the stage this this mad little horse drawn cart stage um and he had all kinds of people uh performers on there there was a there was a a sort of uh a, a bunch of guys on acoustic guitars of course we're in you know hippie land but then there was an amazing jazz saxophonist um who was incredible and we we uh we went over there and we watched a lot of that for a lot of the evening got very cold um and then at some point <coughs> i think we went back in stone circle decided the kids were still partying and then it was like one in the morning we were like we better go home so we walked back the 20 minute walk across the field um at which point i could hear in the mist uh rolling over the hills i could hear the the, the chants of harry krishna's and as we got closer to our van i realized one row away was a giant group of harry krishna men and oh, ladies you don't want to um, pitched up there do you Dude, they they when were there. When you wake up hungover uh, in the morning, the last thing you want is a yeah, chirpy Harry yeah. Krishna. But they were singing, they were chanting. This is gone one in the morning now, Johnny. These bloody Harry Krishna men, they were singing and chanting. They're so happy that it's hard to tell them to shut up. But um, and I thought, well, I can't tell them. I'm not going to tell them to shut up. I'm going to embrace it, Johnny. Going to embrace it. So <laughs> you don't want to be the guy at the Stonehenge on the south side. <laughs> going, Can Keep it down. Just go to bed. <laughs> Yeah. So yeah. anyway, we were we were in the van. I could still hear the Harry Krishna men, but then uh, I, they sort of seemed to fade. Oh. And I thought, well, that's happening there because I, I thought they're either, I don't know. I thought, well, they, they've got a giant temple thing, so I thought there's no way they're moving. Anyway, when we got up in the morning, I say morning, we got up at four a.m. Johnny, before the sunrise. So I went to bed at about one thirty. Got up at four a.m. Um, and we went out outside of the the van. Uh, and it was incredible, like enveloped in mist, everywhere mist and still dark. Um, but you could just about see something on the horizon, sort of just a little twinkle. Um, and no Harry Krishna men. They'd moved the whole temple thing. Wow. We walked for 20 minutes down to the monument and they were right there. I was like, how have they moved this? I don't know how they moved it. I mean, you, you, moved you're, this at, giant monument. you're at a historical site that's famous for how far they moved the stones. Yeah. You know, the Harry Krishna, they're just what... inspired, aren't they? I don't know what it was made of, man. It must have been made of kite material or something because <laughs> it was big and they'd managed to move it a long way. It was like a, like a, like I'm saying, like a 20 minute walk. It must have taken them hours, I would have thought, in the dark to move it. Uh, anyway, so we got there, Johnny. We got there, and we were we were uh, uh, sort of. It, it was one of the most beautiful things I've ever seen. Um, it's just just waves of of really really dense mist um over the undulating hills and we could see the sun was trying to sort of peak up um so we kind of aligned ourselves behind one of these stones that's in between the the, the inner stone circle and then i think it could have been the alignment stone i don't know but anyway we sort of stood there and um amongst everyone together took my shoes off again jolly obviously I had to ground myself in the the energy of the universe mm. um the, the thingy lines watched... or whatever it is yeah the ley lines and all ley that lines. stuff yeah, all that jazz yeah, the yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah so um we we watched the sunrise um and stood by some proper druids who were who would do they were doing some ceremonies and then they they moved closer to this this giant uh, monolithic stone so I was like, right, let's go stand by them. And uh, everyone was going wild when the sun peaked up. And then this old druid guy turned around and said something like, all hail the sun or something like that anyway. And uh, everyone went mad and the bongos started, the pan pipe started, Johnny, there was a pan pipe crew there. Um, all kinds of jazz was going on. People were getting married, kind of beautiful actually. Lots of people getting married by uh, people that look like Gandalf walking around that were the is that, is that legit? Is it like, is an exception um, that you can get married at Stonehenge for a day? I don't know if it's legally binding, 
But I, I observed, personally, I observed two weddings wow. that were going off. And I thought, well, this is <laughs> Going <lovely."> off? <laughs> going off, mate. They were going off, these weddings. Right as the sun was coming up, I was like, ah, oh, this is this is amazing. Um, so I, I kind of watched these weddings happen. Uh, I didn't I didn't have any beers, Johnny. Obviously, I was at this point. I was in just total re- reverence of of everything going on. Yeah, you you didn't uh, need an alcohol high, did you? No, yeah, I didn't had, need didn't you, need. You an had sunbuzz. Yeah, sunbuzz. Mm. So it was it was so incredibly misty and 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 sort of um, atmospheric that, that you know on the way, Kirsty was saying, "Oh, it's you know the mist. We're not going to see the sun the sunrise." And I said, "No, no." The mist is going to make it more mystical, more special, way more mystical, Johnny. It was Be incredible. More misty. I'm glad it was yeah. way misty, and I, I couldn't, I couldn't see the rolling hills, right? And then all of a sudden, the hills looked like they were floating above the clouds. It was totally amazing. So you had um, a temperature inversion. I guess so. Mm. Yeah, I don't know. Is that what that is that what that scenario is? I don't, I'm not really sure. Yeah, but it was it was incredible. If the clouds so are, look... are you know on the floor, essentially, is is what's happening. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was it was amazing. Um, and then so the sun rose, and then we started walking. We saw people were walking towards the sun, so we started doing that. And uh, then I I was watching these people that were just I don't know they were on some sort of high. A sun high, I guess they were they were running in the fields uh, towards the sun, like these giant, I don't know what the like giant grasses they were running through, um, and I filmed some of it in slow motion, Johnny, and I was like, this is incredible. People were like jumping these fences and then running towards the sun, um, and it was you, you could kind of look at it without going blind because it was so misty, mm. um, but it was it was really amazing. It was an amazing experience um and i think i'll probably go every opportunity i get you're gonna join a cult aren't you brad another cult well do you know what man there was there was uh there were morris men there of course i didn't approach them but there were morris men there didn't approach them didn't approach didn't approach them um one of one of the most fun groups of people were i think they were uh, peruvian maybe whole whole bunch of maybe 50 like South American pan pipe players on mass um were just just doing these really full on pan pipe raves um and they had an old dude that was leading them it was very charismatic uh and they sounded great like the they they didn't just have pan pipes they had these other things they looked like chair legs but they were like a recorder type thing but massive like the size of a chair leg square weird chair leg recorders that that to be honest sounded a little bit off key but on mass just sounded like really spacey and weird so uh giant chair leg recorders were pretty cool um we went into stone circle in the morning uh and that we were there from 4 30 in the morning till they chucked us out at, i think 9 a.m and that was the best vibe ever. Like all of the dickhead 20 year olds had gone. And it was just full of proper like druids. And like there was this. <laughs> you keep saying like proper such a druids. Proper, <laughs> proper druids, mate. Yeah, proper real deal. Real deal druids like really enjoying uh, being in there. There was this sort of drum circle thing going on, uh, which was pretty intense. And. Uh, people dancing like amazingly wild dances going on uh some some of the people were incredible dancers just they'd found the drug they, they'd gone to the drug bin on before they went in <laughs> super <coughs> sorry about that <laughs> i got a um i got a stone age chest infection when i was there from getting so cold did you not uh, hail the I'm sun hard enough kicked. and you're you're now cursed to forever yeah breathe i feel mist. cursed I feel cursed. I've I've definitely got a very deep chest infection. But um yeah, it was it was incredible, mate. Honestly, uh the only thing that could have made it better was if they had a craft beer bar. Um, <laughs> they they had a they had a crepery. They had a bloody crepery. A crepery. And they had Good Lord. a crepery. The they had started. a crepery. They had a donut and coffee shop. Of course. A crepery. 
They had a pizza outlet. Huh? Um, yeah, all in. That doesn't all feel past very proper druid. No, I know. I was, corporate they were by the portalies. They were by the portalies. Right. So I was like, okay, also fair enough. They're, they're kind of away from it. Mm. But um, <clears throat> it was brilliant, mate. It was so good. <laughs> Sorry, I'm going to go again. <laughs> but anyway, I think I've I've babbled enough about uh, ancient uh, yeah, monuments do you know, and Stonehenge. When we started this podcast concept, we said it was going to be 20 mm. minutes long. And you've just taken 24 minutes. So yeah. two years ago, I'd have been like, that's all we've got time for this week. We'll see you on Wednesday. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God we've extended extended this. So, Johnny, I'm taking us away from the mystical mists of Stonehenge. And I'm taking us back, back through the mystery of time and space to about two weeks ago, Johnny, when you promised that you were going to do an experiment with uh, a particular kind of beer and a particular kind of instrument. Um, can you tell us a bit more about that, please? We're going to try to do this audio only on the podcast, right? Yeah, we're going to have... exclusive. We're, we're going to do some, some ASMR here, and I'm going to oh. have a go. Honestly, for the first time, I'm going to try to carry out the instructions of Dykede Brewery, who we read out oh, yeah. two weeks ago, um, who potentially has a way of making the beautiful head that we saw on the Budvars of our Budvar documentary with a can. Wow. Um, and I, you know, I've, I've had a week, so I haven't done it yet. So I'm going to do it live now. And if it works, we'll we'll do a YouTube short and then hell, maybe we'll, we'll go deeper. We'll do a whole episode. But I thought, what better time to do it than Friday? Uh, well, currently it's 12.30 on a Friday. So it's my <laughs> first beer uh, of the weekend. And I'm going to try... Uh, well, I'll read out the comment. This is this is the comment we got. Uh, here's a lowbrow way to get a Czech-ish head from a can slash bottle pour. Take a mm. thick syringe. <laughs> a thick, thick, so yeah, a thick syringe. Thick boy. Suck up yeah. half the beer, half of Ooh. air, violently send it back into the beer and sit back and watch the CO2 in the beer quickly form a large foamy head. Hashtag science. So hang on, is it, it's out of the can, it's already been poured yeah into a glass right and then yeah. you're sucking half of it up in a syringe but exactly. I, half of the beer but then half of the syringe is also air no 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 not half of the beer the syringe is going to be half oh. beer half air right okay yeah. that makes more sense yeah yeah because yeah, otherwise yeah. it needs to be a really thick syringe that's what i think it's gonna be real thick boy, yeah like no i've, I've only got uh, how many mil have i got in this syringe i can fit 12 mil in my thick syringe 12 mil 12 that's not mil. very much mil it's not, not a lot of but it's still quite a thick syringe <laughs> Go on then. Um, I'll give you a go. <laughs> so um, he, he he then followed it up. There were some questions underneath this comment. Uh, people didn't entirely understand it. Um, he, he makes it sound even more dramatic the second time. Um, but I'm, I, I, I'm, I'm just going to have to give this a go. I don't know why I'm still talking. <laughs> so hopefully, what I'm really hoping is I'm going to get a really thick foamy head like you'd get from a side pour tap. Right. So first element of the of this, I've got yeah. as as Radim would insist, I've got a cold, recently rinsed handle jug. It's actually the Malt Miller Lager glass. I've got. Yeah. And I've got a can of Pilsner Urquell. Sorry, Radim. Um, Budvar was sold out when I went to the shop, so it's all good news, really. Um, so I'm just, I'm just going to crack this. I hope it hasn't been shaken up in any way. How is that for you, Bradley? Uh, it was pretty good. Yeah. I feel like you should ho hold everything closer to the microphone. Even, e so right, okay, right. I don't One know how sec. close I'm, that was. I'm getting was the pop good. shield out the way. Let's see if we can get the pop. <laughs> nice. Oh, I've knocked the microphone. Sorry about that, everybody. Right, so I've, I've poured out the beer. I've, oh, yeah. I've poured it relatively carefully because I want to see how much of an impact this is going to have. Nice. So I, I've got a centimetre of pretty loose, big foamed head on top of this beer mm. this must be super frustrating in retrospect but i will do this by video uh, eventually so i'm gonna pull up my syringe to half air so six mil of air and then i'm dunking it in the beer and i'm gonna pull it the rest of the way with beer there we go oh well i've got five mil i'm missing i've got i've got just over half i guess because i sucked up some head cool we let you off. Okay, so then 
I put the syringe back into the beer. Yes. And push down sharply. Okay. Are you ready for this? My reaction's going to be telling you what you need to know. Come on, then. Okay. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I've made, I've made a licko pour. <laughs> oh, wow. That was, that was too violent. Uh, give me a sec. I'm going to take a quick photo of it to show you how violent that was. But but so I'll put that on our Discord forum and on our our Twitter account. Uh, maybe you WhatsApp Instagram it account. to me, Johnny. You you, you want it now? It. Oh my god! Yeah, yeah. Just WhatsApp it over so I can get a full on audio. Oh, I nearly sent it to my wife. That wouldn't look good. <laughs> right, it's on its way. So proof that it's worked there, Bradley. Holy cow! It's pretty remarkable. Hang on. So hang on. What, what uh, that you poured all of the beer in that glass, right? Yeah. And then you did a tiny, a five or six mil injected under the under the foamy head. Yep. Violently. And then it made that amount of head. It made that amount of head. We're talking, that's about five fingers of head. Four yeah. or five fingers of head. Yep. That's, that's wild. It's absolutely so massive. So it works. And it is so stable. Wow. Like, um, I'm, I'm looking at it now, it hasn't. It's gone. It's gone down by maybe thirty percent, but it's a lovely thick head. This holy shit. This is so. I did some googling. I'm going to taste the beer in a sec once the head's dissipated a teeny bit more. Um, I did some research because I think I said in the last podcast. I remember I thought that it was uh, Sapporo used to sell cans with syringes, so you could do this. But I couldn't find any record of that. But what I did find is that Guinness used to do it. So when they first released their cans. Mm. It would have nitrogen in the cans, but they didn't have the widget at that point. They hadn't invented the widget. So it came with a syringe, and you would basically push O2 in. Well, air, sorry. Um, You'd you'd push that in, and uh, it would create that surge. It would agitate the nitrogen. Exactly, exactly. And push it out of suspension. Because I guess that's what I'm doing here. I've pushed a load of CO2 out of suspension. It's created bubbles. Right, I've now got... How long's that been? That's been like a minute. I've now got three fingers of it's not the tightest head but it's pretty tight it's not it's not just a standard head it is it looks like it's been poured by a side pour i reckon and now we're gonna see how how does it taste yeah i'm gonna see how much co2 is left in the actual liquid (laughs) oh yeah it's way flatter really Mm. All, almost too flat, actually. I have I think I've knocked too much out. And there was me thinking that the, the syringe was too small. Or yeah, do you think... You doubted you the syringe. You should have doubted too me. Too violent? So too violent. I think too violent and also maybe too much air. So you could you could have a lot, like, like maybe a quarter air to three quarters beer. Yeah. Well, you need, you need to keep trying it out. Well, exactly. Basically. I need to find the perfect mix. Um, so I'm going to, (laughs) this afternoon, uh, I'm going to have a little play, um, once I finish my work, um, I'll find out the amount of mill of air versus beer that you need and the amount of force you need to do it with. And then I'll put a YouTube short up over the weekend or maybe later this afternoon. Um, we need to, uh, we need to patent this, uh, this idea, Johnny. I'm not sure we can patent the syringe. We need to. Well, we call it this. We'll call it the side pour syringe. The beer syringe. The side pour syringe, surely. Maybe. Yeah, I guess. Because I guess you might. There might be tweaks we could make to the syringe. Yeah. To. Uh... Well, presumably it's how big the nozzle is. Um, you, you know, we could put some some markings on the side of it where you f- your fill point of of air versus beer, all that kind of stuff. Johnny, we get this is a million dollar idea, Johnny. We're gonna. I don't think we're it is. We're to, charging a lot for these big beer. We're gonna sell it to big beer. Maybe they'll try and hush <laughs> us. They'll try and uh, they'll take us out to, 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 to stop us from spreading this amazing. Uh, what what, uh, we, uh, what are we gonna do about Dyke Day Brewery? Because to be honest, it was their idea. We'll take him out. We'll take them out. You're assuming it to him. It's too good. We'll take them out. This is, but, this is too good. This right. is too good, Johnny. Okay. Uh, we so need there's, to. There's gonna be a to, murder. It's already drop not the everything crime. we're doing. Just drop everything we're doing. And go on a murder. This time, I mean, invent a This syringe. time, next solstice, Johnny. Next, next time, this solstice, we're going to be millionaires, mate. Right. We're going to be beer, 
we're going to be billionaires. Side billionaires. Poor, billionaires. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Side poor syringe billionaires. <laughs> yeah. There we go. Right. right. Okay. Let's talk about the video before, I don't know, it's Monday. Oh, God. Um, I forgot we had to talk about a video. <laughs> I forgot what we're here for. Oh, wow. Yeah. The point it's of this podcast so is, is the behind the scenes of the videos. Um, yes, that's true. I mean, you, you know the background to this. I went uh, to St. Louis uh, researching <coughs> for my book and had the privilege of going to Side Project Cellar, uh, picked up two of their smallest bottles to bring home. Uh, and it was an apricot sour called La Fosse. And it was a, a creek, uh, a Missouri wild ale with balaton and uh, another kind of cherry, I forget. And they were some of the best wild ales we've ever tried, right? Mate, uh, I can't really express how good the the apricot one was. I think it was possibly, oh, I was going to say, um, maybe the most delicious beer I've had this year. Other than, the year. other than the one in the, the Budvar mm. uh, tunnels. We're calling them tunnels. Um, it was it was sublime. It was absolutely amazing. It was... It was because I, the dust has settled. We were very excited and and loved yeah. the beers. It was a very very heavily fruited sour, mm. which I'm 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 very much into and very much enjoyed. But I actually preferred the Creek because I think it was yeah. it was a bit more, um, a bit more balanced and a bit more complex. But what yeah, was remarkable? I, I, Sorry, go on. No, I was just gonna. I totally agree with you. It was it was more complex and it was more refined. But, it, you know, sometimes, Johnny, you just need a sledgehammer of apricots. Oh, I agree. Rather, rather than a uh, a scalpel of um, <laughs> balaton cherries to uh, knock a hole in your mind. Um, yeah, it was incredible. I thought they were both incredible, to be honest. But, yeah, and what was yeah. really interesting is, you know, they weren't, they they were very strongly acidic, but they weren't, teeth stripping in the way that a lot of American wild ales have been because America loves to push the envelope and they weren't bretty to hell as well which you know Mm. I love Britannomyces but uh, I think often particularly with cherry beers huge amounts of bret can be quite distracting and next to the cherry head down that kind of band-aid band-aid kind of medicinal route Um, so I, I thought it was brilliantly balanced and beautifully drinkable despite sorry not despite probably because of all the complexities that were in there. There was lovely barrel character. There was lovely lactic character, but not too much. There were hints of sort of, you know, wilder characters, maybe some some Brett and stuff like that. But really it was, the cherry beer was about the tannins and the oak and the the, the cherry tannins and the cherry fruit. Um, and the apricot beer was, was all about the apricot with some, you know, rich um, yogurty acidity. It was just two very, very different, very incredible beers. Um and then in the comments, everyone was like, nah, nobody cares about the wild ales from Side Project. It's all about the stouts, which, yeah. you know, might be the case. I think their international reputation is, is more about wild ales, but perhaps in, in the US, the home of trading, it's it's all about the stouts. But the stout that I had at the brewery was, was fantastic, but no better than what I've had at 100 other breweries, whereas the wild ales were literally remarkable. Um why, why do you think there is this sort of American fetish for big stouts rather than, you know, like where uh, those, uh, I think, you know, a kind of uh, a wild ale like the, the cherry one has sort of, you know, a lot of uh, similar kind of things maybe going on that, that someone who likes a big pastry stout or whatever might enjoy and that it's it's kind of so full-on in an experience and well i mean we have to be honest most humans are craving sweetness that's Mm. just innate in humans the calorie chasing um sugar addiction um the 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 pure relation that comes with something that kind of trashy um and the nostalgia that also comes with it a lot of these beers you know it's no accident that a lot of these big pastry beers are based on cereals and sweets and cakes and stuff from our youth so there's a very obvious lots of very obvious psychological reasons why pastry stout is incredibly popular and i don't judge anybody for that what what's frustrating is that yeah that it's at the expense of stuff that you know is much harder to make 
which shouldn't really figure in in a drink. It shouldn't be about how hard it is to make. It should be about how delicious it is at the end of it. But you know, there's a lot of effort going into these beers. That then, you know, there was a comment from somebody I forget who said like, you know, all they're interested in, in is the stouts and side projects. As a result of that, have started mixing in their big stout releases with sour releases. So you can't buy one without the other, and that's been mm-hmm. incredibly frustrating. And I say all kudos to Side Project for doing that because it should be. Um, we shouldn't be enabling the secondary market. That's not what beer should be about. Beer should be attainable for everybody. And as soon as it goes into the trader market, the prices mean that it's not. Um, but it should also um, be up to the brewery to decide what they want to encourage people to drink. You know, if they 100%. if they want to champion something, then that that's on them. And if it doesn't work as a business model, they either change it or they they fail. But I, you know, the the anger that that poster sort of implied was was kind of silly, really. Especially when if you can't get the side project ones there, there's literally a thousand other breweries in the world that make pastry styles just as good there's there's not a hundred that make wild ales that good in my opinion no way no way they were they were world class for sure yeah incredible incredible um i i had a comment do, have you got a, i've got a comment vaguely related so maybe i'll i'll uh, dive in go on you go first you go first so so paul c as 1805 said that is a tasty looking menu at, at 234 which is when i flashed up the menu forgot to color correct that shot which annoyed me um no doubt about it but five ounces at 11 dollars for an mp let me try and convert that to the english pint uh and he comes up with 33 pounds a pint wow Holy um shit. Which, you know, if you charged wine by the pint in a restaurant would come out way higher than that. Um, he says, disclaimer, I in English, I like to buy my beer in pints. Make it 30% if you like, but I'll have a pint, please. Which somebody needs to have a chat with Paul and just check he's all right. Because nobody should be drinking even a 7% beer by a full pint, really. Um, no. So I just thought it's very interesting that British people still attach value to the pint. I think it's so hard not to uh, when when we've all grown up drinking pints before. Well, I say we all. I'm assuming you're all a 40 year old man like myself uh, who's been drinking since they were 15. Um, so, you know, it's kind of it's deeply intrinsic in our nature to be like, oh, I want a big, wet, cold beer when it's hot outside and I want a pint and. You know, like you're kind of uh, irking for a pint. I I think I just think it's I get where he's coming from, but he's also a lunatic to sort of (laughs) say that he wants to drink a 30 percent beer. I I do see where people come from, but I I do wish there were more conversations that were like seven pounds for Peroni is too much because that is a mass produced. Oh, yeah. You know, factory made lager in a matter of days. Have you seen a seven pound Peroni while you've been out then? Have you not? I mean, I'm not looking at price of Peroni, to be honest. Well, as, as somebody used to work in distribution, I'm always looking at prices. Um, yeah. But, I mean, that, that that's pretty common in Soho for a pint of Peroni now. And, and you know, people are like, oh, that's a bit steep. But considering what you're actually getting for that money compared to, say, you know, in that case, I, I think it was, it was a Bourbon County. It was a guest beer on the tap. You know, something that's been brewed and fermented for many many weeks and then aged in barrel for up to a year is is a very different beer to a lager that that has never been lagered and took maybe a week to make you know um mm. I, I wish i'm not against arguments about the pint getting expensive the pint is getting expensive but i am against upscaling something that should be drunk in a small wine size glass up to a pint and not turning around and going you know what this carlsberg is not worth 650 mm. So if Paul also wants to follow up with a comment about how outrageously expensive Carlsberg is, then we're on the same page. Big time. Yeah. Big time. Hit me with your comment, Bradley. I got a few, I guess. Uh, I mean, you know, I'd say I I thought you were going to say the comments were full of people talking about my shorts because they are. I did. I mean, they uh, definitely are. Yeah, I, I, I didn't want to. I didn't know whether because <laughs> I remember when we turned up for the shoot and we we lined up the shot and you're like, oh no, the shorts are in it. So I didn't know whether you were a bit worried about that. Uh, well, I mean, I, I don't know. It was. I just want to give a bit of context. It was very, very hot. I don't know how you were wearing trousers. I guess you were, they were chinos. I wasn't they? wearing but... trousers. I was wearing shorts. 
We? Yeah, nobody commented on my shorts. Oh, you are? Okay. Oh, that's, your shorts are not short shorts like mine. I've basically... No, I have, I've rolled I, mine I, I have decency. And I set so up the camera shot, so I knew they'd be in shot. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so I, I'm, I'm wearing uh, some sort of Jazzy Jeff uh, 80s short shorts, uh, which people were, 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 were very uh, inspired by, seemingly. Father Earth Inspired 93. is the word. Inspired. We're going with inspired, Johnny. Uh, Father Earth 93, who we read out all the time. There is no Brett character to that apricot beer, but there's some Brad character mm-hmm. to those pants. That was my awesome. favourite. Yeah, that's a good one. Uh, yeah, people people really enjoyed that in the edit you left in the struggle opening up that, that waxy uh, bottle, Johnny. So we had Justina said the struggle was real trying to open that second bottle. Brad was correct too. We wanted to see the struggle. Uh, lots of comments along those lines. Um, another one. I'm just reading the, the top three comments, actually. I didn't even realise. Uh, uh, this is from Michael. Michael Anderson, 69. <laughs> Michael Anderson, 69, 12. Oh, the struggle is real. That wax can drive any beer drinker mad and make one turn towards cans. Oh, uh, all they, very they, stylish they wax shorts. cans now. <laughs> they do. Do they wax cans? I've never seen a wax can. Yeah, I've, I, I think they do it what to troll the people. Fuck. I was going to say, there's literally zero point in waxing a can. Um, uh, Brad Style is on fire as always. Thank you. Uh, oh, I like this one. I'm going to. I'm just going to read lots of Brad comments. Sorry. This one, KW twenty one forty two. Brad definitely is that cool uncle you wish you had when you were younger. That guy who would let you drink a beer at a family re- reunion when you're 15. Lol, what a legend. We should get your uh, nephew on and, and, and ask them. Uh, well, he is five, so... So I think I he'll, have, he'll, he'll have some important things to say, I reckon. Oh, yeah, yeah. He'll probably grasp me up for all kinds of things. <laughs> but I definitely haven't given him a beer yet, that's for sure. No, but you um, have dangled him while holding a drinking oh, horn yeah. on a beach at Christmas. That's true. Mm. And he was, he was an infant at that stage mm. as well. Um, yeah, that's uh, that was fun. That was fun, um, mate. I just absolutely, I just think it's a great vid. I had so much fun drinking those two beers. That you know, sometimes we drink a lot of beers, and it can be hard work. But drinking those two beers was delightful. Was a joy, and yeah. was an absolute joy. And uh, you know, I think uh, we we said it in the video. You know, we we drunk most of those beers. We didn't really have to pour. Apart from the away. bit that ended up on my keyboard. Oh yeah, was mm. that 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 was that what, was that one of those? It was the apricot. Yeah. Was. Oh dear. Yeah. How is your space bar? Uh, so I, I watched some YouTube videos, took my space bar and also my command button off, cleaned it, oh, and yeah. it's it's a bit better. Yeah. But it's still a bit. It's not the space bar it was, you know. So you've. Uh, you watched some videos. How did you ping? Is it a butterfly keyboard, Johnny? Or is it a different kind of action on the keys? I don't, Do you know I, about that sort of thing? No. Oh, okay. I just put I think, a mini so, screwdriver underneath it. And... Oh, right. Just pinged it up. Yeah. It's probably a butterfly keyboard then. It's probably got very sort of small actuators under it. Um, oh, dear. Oh, dear. Mm. So how did you... Talk me through your cleaning regime there, Johnny. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I used an alcohol wipe. So I pinged it off, nice. used an Good alcohol start. wipe, yeah, yeah. let it dry. Did you get any uh, compressed air in there, Johnny? Got no, well, it wasn't fluffy, was it? You know, it's the, the fluff. Compressed air it helps everything, mate. Oh, does it? Yeah, if I if I jittered you with some compressed air, you'd wake, you'd like surely liven you up as well. Right, oh, okay. You know, it's it's uh, it's a cure-all. Well, I've got some uh, WD-40 in there. Don't use WD-40 no. in the keyboard, guys. No. No, that's <coughs> I mean, no, you, I think you did the right thing with the uh, with the alcohol wipe. Yeah, and it, it's sure. kind of worked. It's kind of worked. It's usable now because I was I was trying to write. You know, when you're writing a book, there's a lot of words and a lot of spaces mm. between those words, and it just got too much. It was infuriating. I, I, I what kept... you should have done. Uh, I actually I think what I should have done. Where where was all this well, advice two weeks ago? But you've you've what you've done is you've t- you had an alcohol problem, and Wait, then what? you use more, and then. With the key, I've got an alcohol with, the, pro- with the space key. Oh, I see what you mean. You had an alcohol problem with it. Yeah. And then you use more alcohol to combat the alcohol. Is that right? Would that work? I mean... Well, yeah, because it's not the alcohol that's the issue. It's the 
residual the sticky, sugary yeah. stickiness. Yeah. So I guess the high, because the, the, they're like eighty odd percent alcohol, aren't they? In a in a um, alcohol wipe. Oh yeah, it's a good one. So that has got no residual stickiness. As soon as you wipe something with it, it evaporates almost instantly, doesn't it? So I I, I would maybe suggest that you could have got more alcohol wipes involved and then uh put them in a syringe johnny <laughs> with some with some wild ale and just blast just blasted it just right. go hell for leather well you know if, if it sticks again yeah I'll, I'll go all in go for it yeah. you've got to go for it yeah syringe full of alcohol wipes and and wild wild beer don't use wild beer actually no that's just i th- no, I reckon. Have you ever drank Ray and Nephew's Overproof Rum? No. Don't. It's absolutely foul. Um, it, it's the it's one of the strongest things I've ever consumed. Um, I used to go to the Notting Hill Carnival uh, when I was a younger designer, and I had a hookup with I think it was Diesel, who made like the clothing. And uh, Diesel used to throw a pretty cool party um, on these canal boats. And it was sponsored by Diesel. All the booze was Ray and Nephew, uh, Ray and Nephew's rum. Um, and they, they used to rent several canal boats out the back of a pub. And it was all private, all unlimited rum. I can remember being incredibly drunk on a canal boat, sat listening to... I think his name's Shovel from uh, M People, uh, bongoing a bongo drum Always to really. yeah he was bongoing a bongo drum to, along to um, uh, M People music Johnny and I thought I got to get out of here I got to <laughs> I got to get out of here this is too much Johnny I'm like, I'm so drunk on Ray Nephew's Overproof Rum and uh, my insides are fire. And shovel is in my ear holes with the bongo drums it's too very much. Very fear and loathing. And the floor is moving, yeah, Johnny. The floor yeah. was was wobbling. Well, you're on a boat. Get out of there! I was on a boat. Yeah. I was on a boat. But uh, it was very fear and loathing. But I tell you what, Ray and nephews are proof rum. Please don't send me any Ray and nephews. This is not an advert. I'm not. <laughs> I'm not I don't want any. If it was I an advert, it was a terrible advert. You said yeah, it was yeah, awful. I don't want any. I don't want any. I really like rum, but I don't like that rum. It's too mental. Uh, I think I've had Purse's rum, and that is also incredibly strong. Um, but this stuff in the keyboard, in a syringe, pew! It's like it's like seventy percent or something. It's crazy. That would that clean you right out well, in I'll, a jiffy, mate. I'll consider it, but I'm not sure I should take the word of of what twenty five year old swanky <laughs> party dwelling Notting Hill Carnival yeah. frequenting designer mm. Brad. Mm. I, I'm more about Druid Stonehenge brand. Oh yeah, yeah. True, true, true. Yeah. Uh, in that case, use a didgeridoo. And, <laughs> uh, just sort of uh, wait for sunrise. Use a didgeridoo. Right. It just blow. And make real make hard. sure you you have grounded yourself uh, by taking your sandals off in the studio, and feeling the ley lines the studio, that yeah. run straight through. Yeah, the yeah, yeah. Oh, there's definitely ley lines under the studio, mate. Yeah, hundred percent. Mm. There's there's magic in the in the air around around the studio. There is. I think. I think. I think it's the natural culture of of side project now. Um, oh, Bradley, I, I've I've got to call this. I've got to bring this to a close. This is ridiculous. Yeah. Uh, Fifty three minutes. <laughs> Fifty four minutes. Wow. Yeah, I haven't even done the outro yet because we've we've got to remind people that we do, of course, have tickets for our festival still available. We've mm. we've we've only got. About a hundred tickets left now, so it Slightly is under. getting to crunch yeah. time. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you haven't bought your ticket yet, please do. Uh, we're going to start brewing the beers in just under a month, which is very yeah. very exciting. Uh, we can announce we've sorted our pizza supplier. Hell yeah! Who, so Sam's Pizza, my local sourdough pizza supplier, will be slinging pizzas all evening, uh, and we'll have a lovely menu with them with beer matches, of course. So that nice. you know what beer to get with each one. Um, 
And we should have some new breweries to announce next week. I've got some meetings uh, lined up to get all that decided. So more announcements coming. But you can get your tickets at 18 quid. Includes your first pour. You'll meet me and Brad. There'll be uh, bottle shares all evening. Free crisps. Delicious pizza for sale. Um, and obviously lots of merchandise, which we're working on right now. And there might be a sneak preview of some glassware we're working on. Slipping into the Discord mm. forum uh, pretty soon as we look for look for some feedback on it. Um, so yeah get your tickets the link is in the description for this podcast and all over our socials otherwise we'll see you on Wednesday for well we're back at back at Budvar for a pouring masterclass with Brad and Radim so we'll see you then at 4pm on Wednesday love and beer the bubble and Friday 5pm podcast are brought to you by the nerds behind YouTube's craft beer channel you can watch over 400 mini documentaries at youtube.com slash the craft beer channel. And if you love what we do, support us via Patreon and get access to merchandise and our amazing Discord forum, a positive and welcoming space for everyone who loves beer, food and homebrewing. Love and beer. Love and beer.